What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be about the Bashirs. I want to add a little bit more to the tank. I feel like those guys are just kind of uh, laying around doing Bashir stuff. And I want to see how they would react if I put plants back into the aquarium. Remember those days, those L's, I could sleep right now. I get paid, fake game, stay in peace. I breaking the blues over steak, I gotta eat right. You could be my peace sign. <laughs> One of the main reasons why I took it out was because my Bashirs, when they were establishing their hierarchy and stuff, uh, they were being really territorial. And when it comes to objects in the aquarium, when they were establishing their hierarchy, the big Bashir would claim those spots. And any Bashir that come near that area, they're going to get wrecked. And because my Bashirs now have established a hierarchy, I wonder if they'll claim territories if I start adding things into the aquarium. So that's pretty much what we're going to do today. It's not going to be adding any hardscape and stuff, wood, rock. I'm not going to be adding that in because if my Bashirs freak out, I don't want it to potentially injure itself on those like hard surfaces it's just going to be adding a live plants and when it comes to live plants it's not going to be any plants that are like substrate dependent and stuff it's going to be anubias maybe java fern uh, moss things like that but before we add the plants into the aquarium i need to kind of plant proof my tank see the way that the tank is set up this bulkhead right here flows from this tank and drains all the way into the sump down here and then in the sump water gets pumped back up into the aquarium and that's how the whole filtration thing works so the issue with this is since this is the only area that water gets drained out from if that clogs it's pretty much game over and uh, this tank is going to be pretty much ruined well, not ruined but it's going to be a huge headache for me so we have to make this part right here plant proof and what i mean by plant proof is when plants die like uh the leaves or whatever like from here for example the anubias and stuff when the plants die, the leaf is going to float up, and when it floats up, we can't have it block off the top of that drain right there. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do right now with little pieces of sewing canvas. So I went ahead and got two styles of canvas, uh, this one right here and this one right here. I'm going to go ahead and try this one, which I'm going to incorporate with that floating ring thing right there. I'm going to try and see if I can uh, make this style happen first. And if that doesn't work, I'll go ahead and move forward with this one right here. So let's go ahead and uh, get to cutting. Looks good. Something like this. And now all we gotta do is cut a hole to fit the bulkhead fitting thing and we should be good. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is try and see if this thing floats. So before we cut anything, before we remove all like, the bulkhead stuff, let's just go ahead and see if it's buoyant. And uh, here we go. See this? Oh, look at that. Super buoyant. Oh. Not as much as I hoped. Because if I push down, it'll it'll sink for a little bit. Yeah, push all the way down. Oh. It doesn't work. So since this plan didn't work, we now have to resort to plan B which will work for sure because I've done it before. Trial and error, guys, it's trial and error. So plan B is to take this mesh, cut like a little cone, and then slip it over my bulkhead. So it's like a, like an extra screen, if you will. But the thing is, we're not gonna be using too much of this. I think we're probably just gonna be using this much, let me measure it. The good thing about this stuff is it's super cheap, so if you waste it like how I just did, it's not that heartbreaking. So what we're gonna go ahead and do now is get this and put this around the bulkhead so it's like a little retaining wall, if you will, so nothing can clog the main drain, which is all the way down here. And I actually see something down here, a piece of krill. Unfortunate. All right guys, so we're pretty much done. What I have here is the cage. Uh, the Bashirs are pretty big, so I don't imagine them smashing through that little crack. Maybe you can see it a little better this way. So that's the only gap that's there towards the top. Um, I could arrange this so it doesn't have a gap, but I need the flexibility to remove this to clean and all that stuff. So that's why I have it like this. And uh, I'm gonna have the zip tie kind of secure it up here by just securing it on the lid. I've always wanted to take off that original drain plug thing that I had. This thing would always get filled with like gunk and uneaten food and stuff. So that's why I've always wanted to get this out, but I just never really had the time to. But now we have that new drain. I've had something like this before, but in the past I had the holes kind of thin. So for example, my original drain strainer thing was 
this kind of mesh, but that strainer has this kind of mesh. So as you can see, the holes are significantly bigger on the new one compared to this one right here. The fish are kind of big now um, and all their food is pretty much sinking. So I never have to worry about that being clogging. Plus I have this right here, which is gonna be around that. Wait, actually, let me go ahead and put it on right now. So this is pretty much the setup now. I have the ring that goes around the strainer, strainer, which is right there, secured to the lid, which should not fall off because I'm gonna be securing this with another zip tie. It's gonna be held on by this egg crate. So just in case the Bashirs wanna act crazy and knock that over, they won't have a chance to knock it off because uh, it's already a pretty tight fit to get that strainer on. And I can't imagine my Bashirs knowing to just kind of smash straight into that. And besides, if they get in there, um, hope they don't knock on wood, that hole is big enough to just let them go smooth slide all the way down and end up here. There's no strainer, so if we see a Bashir in the sump area, uh, you know how they got there. All that stuff has to fail for that to happen. And hopefully it doesn't get stuck because I don't want to break this up. So that's pretty much the first step when it comes to plant proof in my tank. I'm going to go ahead and leave it as is for now. I'm going to come back tomorrow because I have to run some errands and stuff. But if you have any ideas on how I can secure that better, let me know down in the comments below. Oh, one more thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and prep this tank for a brighter light because I'm adding plants into this tank now. I have to add more lighting for the plants. And before I only had a little mini light on the right side of the aquarium. Now I have to get the Bashiras used to having light again. Uh, when I was growing them out and stuff and they were younger, they did have a lot of light in here, but it was growing a lot of algae because I wasn't spending so much time cleaning the tank. I went ahead and reduced a lot of light in this aquarium. So. Now, in order for them to eat comfortably and stuff, I have to get them used to brighter light and stuff. That's what I'm gonna add to the tank before we leave today. And uh, right now I'm just securing the little drain. And um, yeah, the next time we show on the camera, we will be either adding more plant secure stuff for this aquarium or maybe even adding the plants, who knows? All right guys, so I'm sitting here editing the video and I'm just trying to picture what type of plants I wanna to add into this tank. So for one, I can't add any floating plants into this aquarium because that just increased the chances of the plants clogging the drain. So that's out of the question. Frog's bit, all of that hornwort that I have, anacris that I have, can't run it. There's a slight chance that I'll be able to put some washers hanging in the aquarium, but I have the air stone in there and if the Bashirs get scared and stuff, they'll kick it around, that shit's gonna fly everywhere and it's just not gonna be a good look, especially because it tears up into little pieces and again, it can get stuck into the drain. I've had some water tank in this tank before and it didn't really work out that well. So maybe we'll put it in, maybe not, but it would look nice if there was a big clump of some water tank and there's like Bashir's head sticking out and stuff. So uh, I'm considering it. But the main plants that I'm planning on adding into this aquarium is Java Fern and Anubius. The main reason why I wanna add these two is because it's low light plants and stuff. So I can get away with not having super bright lights into the aquarium. I don't have to dose anything. It doesn't really need substrate or anything. I can just tie it to a rock, throw it into the aquarium and just leave it as is. I mean, the fish has to tear the plant to pieces for it to die. So um, I've had the same piece of Anubius in my sump for a very long time and it's still there. And yeah, honestly, this plant is like bulletproof bulletproof and that's the type of plants that i need in this aquarium so i can't add any floating plants into the aquarium because i don't want it to get stuck in the drain i can't add any super fast growing stringy plants because they'll reach the surface in no time and that's another way that it can clog the aquarium i'm basically choosing plants that have the least amount of risk when it comes to that drain right there if that drain wasn't there i'll have an unlimited amount of choices when it comes to plants for this tank so i'm for sure getting anubias into this aquarium um thinking either anubias nana or anubias petite the ones that stay really really low and uh, maybe add one or two pieces of Batari, or I think that's how you pronounce it, but the big Anubias. Honestly, I think Anubias is from Africa too, because uh, the Bashirs are from Africa. Yep, Anubias is native to tropical central and Western Africa, so perfect, goes with the theme. So I'll go ahead and add the plants in the next video. This video is just getting the aquarium plant ready. Um, and don't worry about the drain and stuff. I went ahead and blocked that off because I know it's kind of dangerous to leave that part open. Uh, even though there's a very slim chance that a Bashir might be able to slide through, uh, if it does slide through, it's gonna be really, really bad. But yeah, man, if you have any suggestions on what types of low-tech hardy plants I can add into this aquarium, um, let me know down in the comments below because I'm taking suggestions. I wanna add some plants in here and just, just take the chance to see if they'll end up fighting again. But if not, it's gonna be great because uh, these Bashirs like to hang out in the back and stuff, just hiding away from people. And I feel like if I were to add some sort of plant in there, um, it would increase their comfortability. I'm gonna slowly add in plants one by one. 
and um, just see if they claim territories. I mean, because they obviously already have a hierarchy, so I honestly don't think they're gonna fight. And if they do, then I can just move all the Anubias somewhere else. I have, I have tanks I can put them in. So that's pretty much it for today's video. I just wanna give you guys a breakdown of how I usually plant proof an aquarium, especially something like this right here with the sump and the bulkhead and stuff. You just wanna minimize risk because if anything were to happen, it's gonna be all bad. I'm just gonna knock a whiff it up because um, yeah, that, that can't happen, it's bad. And also I wanna leave a gap between this video and the next video in case you guys have comments and stuff and ideas. I wanna take in as much as I can before I move forward with the plant purchase. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for the next one and peace guys.